Hi, and welcome to the fourth quick start guide for the Neo Blockchain Toolkit. In this specific video, I'll show you how to create your first smart contract using the C-sharp programming language. Once you're familiar with this, not only will you be able to transfer assets on Neo blockchains, you'll actually be able to run some custom code. This quick start series is intended to get you quickly up and running using some of the key functionality of the blockchain toolkit, but we also have some full tutorials available that will walk you through the end-to-end -end process of building your first real-world Neo smart contract, and links to those tutorials are in the description. We're going to use the c -sharp programming language to write our smart contract code. There's a Visual Studio Code extension that provides a C-sharp editing and build experience within VS Code. And if you've already developed in C-sharp, then you probably already have the extension installed. I'm using a new Windows installation though, so we'll need to install the extension. I'm going to load VS Code and then go to the extensions panel. I'll search for C Sharp and just double check that I found the right extension. The ID is ms-.nettools.c sharp. And then I'll click the install button. One other tool that we'll need is a compiler that can compile C sharp assemblers into bytecode that's designed to run on the Neo virtual machine that's used in Neo blockchains. We're going to use a compiler called Neon and it can be installed from a command prompt. I'm going to type .NET tool install dash G neo.neon dash dash version 3.0.0 dash RC1. Note that I'm explicitly specifying the compiler version as at the time I'm recording this, the Neo3 version of the Neon compiler is still a preview. You might not actually need to specify the version number by the time you're watching this video and check the notes in the description for more information. Now we're ready to write and compile smart contracts using the c -sharp programming language. So let's get started. I'm going to open VS Code and open the folder that we created in the previous quick start video. The workspace still only contains a single file, the configuration for our private Neo blockchain. Let's go over to the Neo Visual Dev Tracker sidebar panel and I'm going to start our private blockchain and I'll go ahead and open up a Visual Dev Tracker tab so that we can explore the blockchain visually. I'll also hide the Neo Express terminal output but Neo Express will stay running in the background and we'll see new blocks as they appear in the Visual Dev Tracker. I'll also hide the empty blocks in the Visual Dev Tracker so that it's easier to identify which blocks contain transactions that we've created. You'll notice that the Quick Start panel is actually already suggesting that we might want to create a new smart contract. If I didn't have the Quick Start panel visible, I could also open the context menu of the Blockchains panel and click on Create Contract in there. So I'll click Create Contract. I'm asked which programming language I want to use. I'll select c -sharp. And then I'm prompted for a name for my contract. For this quick start, we'll just create a trivial contract that doesn't really do anything useful yet. So I'm just going to call the contract Hello World for now. Now you can see that a file has been created called helloworldcontract.cs. And this file contains some c -sharp code. And this is code for an example, trivial Neo smart contract. And also, if we go back to the Explorer pane, you can see that a folder has been created where we can place all of our c -sharp code files that are related to this contract. Also, build configuration and build tasks have been automatically created for me so that I can build my contract within Visual Studio Code. At any time, I can run the build task within VS Code to build my smart contract. That completed very fast because my contract was actually already built for me when I first created it. But let's go back to the hello world contract.cs file and make some changes. The file contains a single class, and that class has some metadata attributes that currently have placeholder values. So I'm going to change the placeholder values. The display name is just an arbitrary string to use when referring to your contract, but often you'll see people prefix the display name with some value that identifies the author. I'm going to use my GitHub ID here. 
and I'll enter my name as the author and I'll add my email address and I'll add a description and I'll save my changes. The example code provided is for a smart contract with two methods and some internal storage. This smart contract allows any NEO account at all to store a numerical value on the blockchain and later retrieve that value. I'm going to leave this code as is for now, but we will experiment with modifying the code in the next video in this series. I did change those attributes though, so I am going to go ahead and rebuild my code. And now I'm ready to deploy my contract to my private NEO blockchain. So I'll just go back to the Neo Visual Dev Tracker sidebar panel. And you'll see that the Quick Start panel has now noticed that I do have a contract in my workspace, but it has not been deployed. If I didn't have the Quick Start panel visible, I could also right click on my blockchain and I could click Deploy Contract from there. So I'll go ahead and click that. And now I'm asked to select an account. Deploying a contract to a NEO blockchain involves creating and signing a transaction using a specific account. And the account that you use must actually pay a fee in gas to deploy the contract. In the previous video, we created an account called Alice and we've already transferred some gas to Alice. So I'll use that account to deploy my contract. Next, I'm asked which contract I want to deploy, and I only have one contract in my workspace at the moment, so there's only one option. I'll go ahead and select that. And I'm now told that my deployment transaction has been submitted. Let's close that message and go back to our Visual Dev Tracker tab. You can see that a new non-empty block has appeared, and it has one transaction in it. And if we look at the size of this block, we'll see that it's a bit larger than our previous blocks. And that's because this transaction actually contains all of the bytecode and all of the associated metadata for our smart contract. I can click into the block and then into the transaction. And we can actually see here the JSON metadata for our contract as part of the script in the transaction. It's being passed as the first argument to a method called deploy on a special built-in contract called management contract. The second argument there is the actual bytecode for our smart contract. This is how contract deployment works in Neo3. Next, let's invoke our smart contract. I'll right click on my blockchain and click invoke contract. The toolkit then creates a new file for me, untitled.neoinvoke.json, and opens it up in a special editor. If I go back to the explorer pane, I can see that a folder has been created for me to store my invoke files. Let's rename this first invoke file to test1. An invoke file contains a list of steps. Each of these steps represents a contract invocation. Our current file only has one step, and it's empty, so let's fill it out. First, I need to pick a contract to invoke, and when I click inside this field, the toolkit presents a dropdown containing the contracts that it's aware of. Most of these are built-in contracts, but I'm going to select the one that we just created, Hello World Contract. Next, I need to specify an operation to invoke. Again, when I click into the text box, I'm presented with a dropdown showing all of the methods on my contract. I'll choose the change number method. And next, I need to provide values for the arguments to my contract method. This method only expects one argument. It's called positive integer. I'll specify 42. Invoke files are actually just JSON files. If I preferred, I could switch to a JSON editor using this switch link in the status bar. In this mode, I won't see the helpful dropdowns for contract and operation names though, so I'm going to switch back. And let's run my invoke file. I'm going to click run this step and I'm now asked to select an account to use to create an invocation transaction. This time, let's use Bob's account. He'll also need some gas to create this invocation transaction, but that's fine because in the previous video, we also transferred some gas to Bob. So you can now see that a transactions pane has just popped open within the invoke file editor. This pane will show any transactions recently submitted from this particular invoke file. 
And initially the transaction shows as pending and then soon after it changes to OK as soon as it's placed into a block on the blockchain. I can click on the transaction to see its details. And this is actually the same information that I would see if I found the transaction within the Block Explorer panel. We can see my single argument of 42 being pushed onto the stack and then the change number method being called on my contract. I'm currently using a preview version of the blockchain toolkit and that doesn't have a storage explorer yet. So we can't actually go and look at the storage for the contract. But in the next video, we'll use the debugger that's bundled with the blockchain toolkit to step through our contract code and convince ourselves that the number provided is actually being added to contract storage. So there you have it. You've now created your first Neo smart contract. In the next quick start video, I'll show you how to step through your code using the debugger that's included with the toolkit. I hope to see you there.